Lovers Rock. Um, as you were talking about women before that, I know that you did want to say hello uh, to your road manager, who I believe has, well, not problems with uh, women at the moment, but has a specific relationship going on with somebody that you wanted to refer briefly to. Um, so if you'd like to say hello to him before we forget to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say I love Chris, but you be more concentrate on your work more and leave human business alone because that would get your caps turvy. <laughs> so we hope that Chris was listening and uh, took note of those words of wisdom. Um, he's the, the tour manager with the band and it seems an appropriate moment just to say uh, that there are two more concerts on this German tour. Uh, one on Monday, that's in Bonn at the Rheinterrassen, and apparently leaflets have been distributed, the concert's already sold out, so if you were disappointedly thinking that you wouldn't be able to get down there, uh, take heart, because it's not fully sold out, there is still places uh, available, obviously, to dance, to no seating in the Rheinterrassen, thankfully, so if you'd like to go along, uh, a different kind of carnival being celebrated in Bonn on Monday at the Rheinterrassen, that's the 2nd of March, of course, and on Tuesday in Hannover, the Rotation Club. So Monday in Bonn, Tuesday uh, in Hannover. Then those are the last, last dates on uh, this current tour. There was a lot of dub on that last track too. Uh, the next track is a, is a dub as well from the album called Prince Farai Dub. How do you approach dubbing yourself? Because I mean, every producer has a different approach, it seems to me, but it's hard sometimes to know exactly how individuals go about it. I mean, how do you set about uh, setting up a dub track? Well, normally, well, after we done mix down the vocal, you know, we really took the vocal from it and remixed to a dub, and then really get some dub together, you know. Hard quality dub, not like a simple dub, good dubs, you know. It's an interesting phenomenon altogether that, I mean, dub music, in fact, the history of it seems to only go back a few years. I think it's it's incredible that uh, it probably doesn't go back more than ten years. I don't know when did it when did it first start. Well, the, the first time I really hear dub was a, a tune called Fatty Fatty Ram Jam, you know, and that was some um, Lira Eptune stuff, and that is a very long time from I was playing sound system around. 16 year of age and now I'm 35, you know. Well, you don't look 35. I won't say how old you do look, but you don't look 35. <laughs> well, even my work, I don't really work as a man 35. I work as a man around 15, you know. So when did you start exactly? I mean, what age were you when you started with reggae music? Well, I start reggae music from a, I around 14 years of age, you know because I was playing sound system. I was one of the hardest talk on sound system in Jamaica before most of who really name have been calling, you know? Them times when them usual call me King Cry Cry, you know? But one day a man come on and say, well, man like you don't really name King Cry Cry, man like you should name Prince Farai and just go at it at that, you know. It was as simple as that. You just changed from one day to the yeah. next. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is the uh, Prince Farai's dub then. <laughs> 